Hello friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Emily and here on my channel I make mostly crystal videos but sometimes spiritual videos, small business videos, fun vlogs, and more. So if any of that sounds interesting to you be sure to subscribe because I put out new videos every single week. I know my hair looks a little weird today. I spent like two hours curling it and it still looks bad so I just needed to get on with my day. So it looks like this and it will probably be totally flat by the time I'm done with this video we're just gonna ignore it. So today is another crystal chat video. This is a series where I do a deep dive into one specific crystal to talk about its geology, spiritual properties, how to tell fakes, and more. If you'd like to see all the crystal chat videos I've done so far, I will have the playlist linked above in this video and in the description down below. So let's get into it. Today we are talking about one of the most well-known and loved crystals, which is Labradorite. Let me just reiterate the spelling of Labradorite right here because I remember when I was new to crystals, like very new, I thought it was Labradorite. So I was searching up on Etsy for Labradorite and I ended up finding something misspelled as Labradorite and that was my first piece ever. So make sure you're spelling it correctly. Labradorite is a mineral in the Feldspar group. I actually just did a whole video on this feldspar group and all the other crystals that are in it. So if you want to learn more about the geology of these crystals, I will have that video linked up here and down below as well. Specifically, Labradorite is a plagioclase feldspar and it has a hardness of 6 to 6.5 out of 10 on the Mohs scale of hardness. Feldspars are the most abundant mineral on Earth's crust. While colorful, high quality Labradorite is harder to find, Labradorite itself is pretty common. Labradorite can be used in things like countertops and tables. While these items made out of Labradorite are incredible, they aren't all that crazy of a concept. Not only Labradorite, but other feldspars are commonly used in things like countertops. Feldspar is a main component of granite, actually, so feldspars being used in these ways is pretty common. Labradorite is also pretty durable and water safe, which makes it great for these purposes. Labradorite is a dark gray to black mineral that is known for its flashy display of colors. But unlike other crystals, the color of Labradorite comes from within the crystal structure and not on the surface of the crystal. The flash of colors you see on Labradorite is called Labradorescence. Labradorescence is a type of shiller or shimmer which is caused by light reflecting and refracting off of surfaces and inclusions within the crystal. These surfaces are called twinning surfaces and they are created during the formation of the stone when conditions are unstable and cause the elements within the mineral to unmix. I go a lot more in detail on this in my Feldspar video if you're interested. But basically when the elements within the mineral unmix during formation, it can cause inclusions and separation and light reflects off of these inclusions and separations creating different light effects. Labradorite is a pretty sturdy and safe stone to work with. It isn't extremely hard as it is only a six to six and a half, but it is pretty good for use in jewelry. Labradorite is water safe and it is safe to leave it in the sun. Your crystal would have to be left in water for a pretty long time to see any negative effects. And even then it wouldn't be dangerous by any means. It just may damage or dull the stone. But again, that's a long time. You would really have to let it soak in water for weeks. Salt water can damage your stone a little more quickly, so it isn't recommended that you leave it soaking in salt water for long periods of time as well. But again, even with salt water, it's not going to cause any harm or danger. Labradorite can change in appearance when left out in the sun, but this would take years of leaving it out in the sun to dull the colors or see any kind of effect. So Labradorite is perfectly fine to leave out in the sun to charge. You can leave it in water, salt water, any methods of cleansing that you like to use with your crystals, Labradorite is safe for. So aside from the typical Labradorite that we all know and love, there are two other varieties of Labradorite that I would like to discuss. And the first is actually White Labradorite, also known as Rainbow Moonstone. You may have noticed that Rainbow Moonstone does not really have the same kind of flash that other moonstones might have, like Peach Moonstone or Black Moonstone. Rainbow Moonstone is actually white with a typically blue flash, but it can actually have a flash in many different colors orange, yellow, purple. I even have a couple pieces of rainbow moonstone that have a red flash, which is very unique, but it flashes in a lot of colors just like Labradorite, and that is because rainbow moonstone is Labradorite. The other variety of Labradorite to discuss is called Spectralite. Spectralite is the name for a specific type of Labradorite, which is only found in Finland. Sometimes people will say Labradorite from Canada or Madagascar is Spectralite, or that Labradorite with a lot of colors is Spectralite, but Spectralite is specifically from Finland only. 
but this is still a type of labradorite. It isn't a different mineral. Spectralite typically has more vibrant colors, more flash, and I do see it have a lot of cool colored patterns as well that normal labradorite doesn't have. Labradorite is pretty common and found all over the world in the US, Russia, Mexico, Finland, like we discussed, has spectralite. It can also be found in India and Canada, and Labradorite was actually named after its discovery in 1770 in Labrador, Canada. For quality of Labradorite, I feel like by the end of this video, Labradorite is gonna be one of those words that just doesn't sound like a word anymore. I'm already getting in my head that I'm pronouncing it wrong somehow. Like I said, Labradorite is a pretty common and affordable stone, but there can be a big difference between low and high quality pieces. I remember one time I went to this crystal shop and once a lady who was working there found out that I also had a crystal shop, she was testing me to see if I could identify the crystals in her shop. It wasn't rude or sassy by any means. She was really nice and this was really fun, but I identified all the crystals that she showed me until she got to one of them and I couldn't identify it. And it was kind of grayish green. It had like no color to it. It was kind of transparent and I had no idea what this was. And obviously the point I'm getting at, it was Labradorite. I can't be sure if this was truly Labradorite or if it was mislabeled and sold to them that way, but if it was Labradorite, it was very, very low quality because there was no colorful flash at all. With no colorful flash, Labradorite can look like a pretty boring, unassuming rock. High quality Labradorite will have a full flash, meaning the entire face of the crystal has beautiful colors when shown in the light. The highest quality pieces will have flash on both sides as well. With a high quality Labradorite, you will probably be able to see this colorful flash from just about any angle, like you can't miss it. But when it's a lower quality piece, this flash might be really patchy or you'll be bringing out the flashlight to see where the flash actually is because it is not apparent. The most common colors for Labradorite are blues and greens, but they can be found in just about any color, including pink, purple, or a full rainbow. While these more sought after colors are a little bit more expensive than typical Labradorite should be, it still shouldn't be wildly expensive breaking the bank. I remember a couple years ago when purple Labradorite was kind of a hot thing, I saw it, pieces of it selling for like hundreds of dollars for like a sphere. I can confirm that when buying Labradorite from a wholesaler, they will sell these pink and purple pieces for a higher price per kilo, but still even then it shouldn't be any outrageous price. So for fake Labradorite, Labradorite is one of those stones that you really just can't fake. Like I mentioned, the color of Labradorite comes from within the crystal structure of the stone and not from the outside. So this isn't something that can be replicated in a lab. It just won't look anything like it. Personally, I don't think I have ever seen any fake Labradorite on the market at all, other than a couple iffy cabochons, which we will get into. The only treated Labradorite that I have ever encountered has been dyed Labradorite cabochons. And these are pretty noticeably dyed. They are typically this pink color and they are so beautiful and they look really cool in jewelry, but it is pretty noticeable that they are fake because the entire stone is that color. Whereas with a natural Labradorite, it will flash rainbow colors, but the stone itself is still gray. So here are some examples of dyed Labradorite that I found. And most of the time these are disclosed as dyed or painted. I'm not sure what this one is. Something is done to it on the surface. So while I was researching to see if Labradorite really does come in every color, I googled red Labradorite because I haven't ever seen a red flash Labradorite before, and I came across these. All the images for red Labradorite clearly showed a dyed crystal, just like the pink ones that I showed you. None of these are natural. You can tell when Labradorite has been dyed because again, the whole thing is gonna be the same color. There's no variation and the stone itself is going to pick up on that dyed color and it is not going to be the normal grayish black. You will see the dye all throughout the stone and with Labradorite's color, it doesn't show all throughout the stone normally. Another thing I saw when researching for this article to see what kind of fake Labradorites were out there, I saw some articles that had a lot of misinformation and I was really disappointed to see this. I saw multiple articles talking about how to tell fake Labradorite from real Labradorite, yet none of these articles had any pictures of this so-called fake Labradorite, and my suspicion is because it doesn't exist. But I'd like to debunk a couple of the things that I saw in these articles real quick. For one, it was said that if Labradorite is sold at a very cheap price, that is a red flag and it's probably fake. 
this isn't true, like I said a couple times, Labradorite's common. And if you get a piece that is like the green or blue standard color, standard quality, it can be pretty affordable. A cheap price can be a red flag for fakes when it comes to other stones, but Labradorite is not one of those stones. Also, it was said that if you see a piece of carved Labradorite, it's probably fake because Labradorite is difficult to carve. Also untrue. Labradorite actually holds up pretty well to being carved. It's only a six to six and a half hardness, so it's not super difficult, but it is pretty sturdy. I see it carved into many beautiful shapes all the time. I have had Labradorite carvings in my shop before. And lastly, it was said if Labradorite comes in just one single color, it is probably fake. This is not true at all. Some pieces of Labradorite will be all totally blue, some will be all totally green, some will be totally purple, some will have a full rainbow. Both of these options are totally normal and natural. Not specific to Labradorite, but another piece of misinformation I see sometimes regarding fake crystals is that you should get a certificate of authenticity to prove that your crystals are real. Certificates of authenticity are not a common thing in the crystal world. Anyone could go ahead and create a fake certificate and print it out and use it to try and scam customers or put people at ease by telling them that their crystals are real, but truly it means nothing. Authenticity certificates are more of a thing for like fine gemstones like diamonds and they are done by reputable organizations like the Gemological Institute of America or GIA. If someone is selling you a regular ordinary crystal like Labradorite with a certificate of authenticity, I would actually be very wary of that because it sounds like they're trying to scam you, not necessarily that it's fake. If someone is trying to sell you regular crystals with certificates of authenticity, it sounds like they're trying to scam you or overcompensate. I have never once come into contact with a certificate of authenticity for any crystal that I have been buying or selling over the years. So back to fake Labradorite. The only fake Labradorite that I really saw while researching was clay imitations and real pieces of Labradorite that look like they may have been heated to try and enhance the color. I saw these photos posted as examples of fake Labradorite, but to me they look like genuine Labradorite that's maybe been heated or dyed to try and enhance the color. Like it looks like someone turned up the saturation on them in real life because the color looks really weird, but this looks like real Labradorite to me, just maybe heated in some way. Personally, I don't ever encounter any pieces that look like this in crystals or in cabochons. I, it's not much of a concern, and I really had to dig to find any examples of a fake Labradorite. There were quite a few tutorials I saw though on how to make clay faux Labradorite, and these pieces were really beautiful and they look like they would be amazing in jewelry, but I do feel like they are noticeably not genuine stones. This is definitely not something you need to be concerned about when shopping for crystals or crystal jewelry. If it's clay, you'll notice it does not look exactly like the stone. Again, they're beautiful and they do resemble Labradorite, but if you're comparing the two, you can tell one's clay. And it seems like anyone who is selling clay imitations of crystals is labeling it as such, so it's really not a concern. It's definitely not a wide-scale issue. You're not going to be finding Labradorite towers, spheres, carvings made out of clay. It's just not a thing. Since Labradorite is such a common stone, it doesn't need to be faked like this. It's pretty accessible. It would be more work to fake it. If you're unsure if a piece is real or not, just remember that the color comes from within the stone and is not going to be seen probably at all angles. And the flash and color may look different from different angles as well. If you're looking at a fake like clay or dyed, the color is going to come from the surface and it's gonna look the same from all angles. I love that people want to educate others and teach people how to look out for fake crystals, but it is unfortunate when people say things that are untrue, that make customers feel more fearful than necessary, that cr fake crystals are waiting for them at every turn. It's important to point out scams, but there's no need to make up concerns where there aren't any to make people even more fearful. When it comes to Labradorite, the threat of being scammed is pretty low. If it looks like Labradorite, it probably is. So a little about the history of Labradorite. As I mentioned, it was officially found and named in 1770, but native people in Canada had 
known and loved Labradorite long before then. Labradorite was referred to as the fire stone because of its flashy colors that resembled the northern lights. According to Inu in Inuit legends, the northern lights were once trapped on earth within these Labradorite stones. One day an Inuit warrior discovered these stones and hit it with a hammer to release the northern lights into the sky where they belonged. He was unable to free them all and that's why we have Labradorite still on earth today. So for the spiritual metaphysical healing properties of Labradorite. I did mention earlier that Rainbow Moonstone is a type of Labradorite, but for the healing properties, Rainbow Moonstone does have different energy than regular Labradorite, so we're just going to stick to Labradorite and Spectralite for this part. Labradorite is associated with the third eye and crown chakras and is known as a stone of magic and transformation. Labradorite is the perfect crystal for awakening spiritual gifts and psychic abilities. It increases intuition and allows for downloads of knowledge from the universe. It can be used to connect to past lives, other realms, and other timelines. It is great for creation and manifestation. Labradorite also offers spiritual protection while working with it and it protects your aura and your energy. Labradorite brings more magic and creativity into your life. It is great for introspection and bringing in new ideas. Labradorite brings you the courage and motivation you need to transform your life. It shields you from negativity and allows you to remain positive in all situations. It also reduces anxiety and allows your mind to focus. Labradorite can also re-energize you when you are feeling down. Labradorite is the perfect stone to carry with you daily or to wear just to bring a little more magic into your life and help you connect to your higher spiritual self. So that's all I have for you today about Labradorite. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new about this beautiful stone. Be sure to like the video, comment down below which crystal you would like to hear me talk about next. Also be sure to check out my crystal shop, CosmicGeology.com, where you can use code YouTube for a discount on any order at any time. I'll have it linked down below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.